You want to just go through the history of Let's Play as we the know pod it? story? And oh, didn't we already do that with the whole Oregon Trail thing? I would I would go into like I don't know I could go into Snatcher and Immortal and well Splatterhouse. Sure, dish about an Immortal. That was the first video LP, was it not? Well, yeah, Snatcher was the one that like got popular or whatever. Mm. That was a screenshot thing you did, though, right? That was. Well, what happened... Well, so the way this worked... And Vlof... please say Snatcher in its original caps lock pronunciation. Snatcher. Thank well, Vlof Horror ended, I have no mouth, but I must screen with a video, which was unheard of at the time. <gasps> oh, I know. No, but it was before, like, YouTube was really hit big yet, you know, or anything. And I forget exactly where he hosted it, but you had to, like, download the MP4, and I even offered to host it off him because his original host wasn't that good. And, um, you know, so, uh... So this was pre-Google Video, even. I mean, it was or around that time. Google Video was around? It was around that time. Yeah. Because at the end of Darkseed, which came afterwards, I posted the YouTube video of Darkseed with voice, which is what we ended up, uh, wrong praying, you know, with, like, the battery still works, like that old shit. Right, right. Right. Um, and Darkseed 2 did include video, and I, I'd used Google Video because that didn't lead to any audio desync problems like YouTube did at the time. Yeah, had no time limit. Exactly, right. Um, so, I actually, Snatcher was a bit of a rush job, because at the time there was a rumor of a Hideo Kojima uh, Snatcher sequel. Hmm. So I'm like, oh shit, someone's going to think to let's play it, so I ran and did it real quick. Um, it was all Google Video. I mean, not not all, I'm sorry. It was a screenshot let's play with like Google Video scenes. Hmm. You know? And Very cutscene heavy game, so exactly. So anyway, it was it was popular. People liked it, and I I was outside smoking a cigarette, and I was like, well, I wonder if there's any other cool games I could do after Snatcher. And one of them I got was The Immortal, which was like this game I loved when I was younger. You were talking to your coworkers about this while you were outside smoking. <laughs> so I, I was thinking, about let's play a new game. <sighs> I, I I actually did a lot to keep Let's Play from my coworkers at the time, <laughs> but um, funny story about that. So I did the Immortal as a screenshot Let's Play originally, and I had like tried to add things since Dark Sea Two. I bought like a gimmick account to post as like the Dark World Slow Beef, which was totally lame. And when I did Snatcher, a bunch of people bought gimmick accounts as characters in the game and started posting. So, like, Zorak posted his Gillian Seed, someone made a Benson Cunningham one, someone did a random Hagiel one. Like, it was really weird and stuff. So, for the Immortal, I figured my special thing was I would do the what ended up being a video Let's Play of it, where I would, like, talk over video gameplay of it. And people ended up liking that better, so I just turned it into a video Let's Play. This is Snatcher? No, the Immortal. Oh, the immoral. Okay. Yeah, well, you're not paying attention to my boring, droning stories. Oh, it's, it's riveting. I'm just, I, I know. All these video games. Excuse me, I'm sorry. This is part five of our long pl- uh, our long cast. That's what I'm going to call it, a long cast. Let's talk. Let's talk. Um, at any rate, um, uh, video Let's Play kind of hit big at... Well, no, it didn't after that. <laughs> I, I just... It struck gold, my friend. <laughs> No, it was when Super Metroid came out, actually. That's the one that really kind of did it. That's the one I remember. Yeah. Where I kind of started noticing it. This guy, like, Dr. Doji Suave did a screenshot, let's play, of Super Metroid, and then quit six videos in. And it had, like, a two-bar rating, and I just had this... I don't know why I did it, but I'm like, you know what, I'm going to get this up to a four-bar, and I just started contributing videos. <laughs> and then I just started making... I just made my own thread. And that's the one that people, I guess, took notice of Video Let's Play, and they started posting their own. And yeah, like, it was the first kind of, like, mainstream game that was in that format that kind of caught people's attention. That's, I was working, that's where you started activating people's nostalgia, I think. I think so. And what's funny is that I was working for MTV Networks at the time, and uh, I was kind of trying to sell it, because, like, people started to do, like, Kefka Floyd did Bionic Commando, and then Psychedelic Eyeball did Prince of Persia, which was kind of a big one. Mm-hmm. And I actually showed, like, this producer from Comedy Central, like, Psychedelic Eyeball playing, like, Prince of Persia. <laughs> and he was that. laughing. Yeah, we were at a party. It was, like, a low-key party, not, like, an off-the-hook party, you know? But I'm Tom like, Cruise stopped by. I was like, hey, what's this? <laughs> <laughs> yes, basically. Yeah. And um, he loved it, so he did it. He did Top Gun. But, <laughs> <laughs> movie. <laughs> wow, Let's Play's pretty old. <laughs> <laughs> Time's all over the place. It's in the late eighties, wow. Basically, more or less. Mm. But um I, I don't know, I guess that's 
it didn't really go anywhere from there. Um, but like Proton John and Psychedel or and uh, Deceased Crab went to YouTube, which kind of spread it there. And I guess that's about where it really kind of, I don't know, caught yeah. fire. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it's pretty. I don't know. I. I I kind of feel like it, it came more about, like, the gamer than the game, in a way, and that's what kind of annoys me about it now. Yeah, around the time when the whole YouTube thing hit, it was... Well, it was more people playing games that other... Like, everyone had played before. That's kind of how, like, your Mario stuff started, and it's like... It's not something that you show to people so much as, like, hey, I'm going to add myself to this and make that the appeal of watching this. Well, the only thing about it, too, is, like, um... And I feel like even though something awful fell into that trap, at least it was a message board where people could tell you, like, it was bad or stupid. There was you, some sense of quality control there, which is kind of how the whole forum community system works. Right. And, but I mean, that's very lost on YouTube because of the way that community is set up. Well, it's decentralized. Exactly. You know, yeah. so someone can tell you you suck on YouTube, but who gives a shit? Like, yeah, there's I mean, no way... like, you are in... Con- you're, like, your administrator of your own community, mm-hmm. so, if, you know... Don't like someone who disagrees with what you're doing, you just block them and allow only the good stuff to be filtered in. It's more of a series of islands than a citadel, you yes. know? I mean, sometimes I worry, too, that something awful kind of goes too far in the other direction, but, like, you kind of do at least need someone telling you, you know, this is not the right thing to do. And you can yeah. see it happen, you, over the back of the day, at least, like, a lot with YouTube, like, with I Want to Be the Guy videos over and over again. Everywhere, yeah. And there were even, like, these unwritten rules where you had to include all your deaths, and you had to play on the hardest difficulty, even if you weren't good at the game. Mm. And, and like, watching someone die over and over in a video game is funny for maybe the first five minutes, but it gets old pretty quick. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, especially when that's the crux of your entire let's <laughs> play. Right. When you have, like, three videos that are all, like, no progress, no progress, no progress. You're like, oh, I have to beat this game. Well, <laughs> uh... I'm not going to act like SA, though, had it all right. Because SA, I mean, Retro Prey was born from a video on SA. Mm-hmm. Really, it was, like, Cynics and I making fun of that guy who playing Super Mario Brothers 3. Yeah, that's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's right. Retro Prey was started without me. <laughs> Would you like to talk about how you got into Let's Play? And it used like... to suck. Uh, oh, sorry. Um... <laughs> I've talked a lot about uh, myself, and so why don't you why don't you pick up this podcast, Braid? <laughs> sure, pull we'll your fucking piggyback cast off this riveting conversation. <laughs> Let me tell you about my beginnings of recording myself playing video games for anonymous strangers. <laughs> I get bullshit for fifty minutes. I'm a podcast. <laughs> Let's see, how did I get started? Um, well, I first started noticing it when it was about 2006. I I'd, I would, had missed the whole Dark Seed shit. You know, no offense. <laughs> um, I started noticing it when the more mainstream games popped up. So the first one I remember was a screenshot let's play of Final Fantasy VI. And oh, that was a game I had played, you know, to death in childhood. I loved that game. And so, you know, just seeing it from this whole fresh perspective kind of got me watching it and kind of following along with it. Like, hey, remember that thing that happened? Oh, yeah, the world got blown, you know, all that shit. Uh-huh. And it was cool. So, you know, followed along with that. I didn't really post much, just kind of watched it. Then, I think it was around... The next one I remember is your Super Metroid thread, where I started... I think I started posting kind of around the time. most boring so fucking good. story. Yeah, no, I'm yeah. Sorry, what were so you saying? exciting. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Let me tell you about my history as a passive observer of what other people do. I'm sorry. Like I, well, this is kind of how, like, our budding friendship began. Because oh, yeah. I, no, yeah, I, I think I sent you, like, a PM about something map-related in Super Metroid. You sent Metroid. me a map. You were like, hey, I like the, I like the thread. Here's, um... There's five uh, missiles. They're here. <laughs> you know, something, something like that. Well, it was funny because, like, I, I didn't. I mean, obviously, I didn't know you from Adam at the time. And then, uh, <laughs> no pun intended. Um, oh. No, no, no. But like, it was weird because like a bunch of people sent me like little hints and shit like that. And then after we'd met and everything, like, and started doing videos, I looked back at my old PMs for some reason. I'm like, holy shit, Diabetes sent me a map. What an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and no, you had totally ignored it. Well, anyway, I'm sorry, though. Yeah, so... But, yeah, that had happened, and then uh, it was after that that the whole co-commentator thing started going. So you'd had, you know, your whole Scarboy thing. Mm -hmm. I think it was Kefka Floyd who did, like, a Mega Man XLP, and this was the first time there was, like, user participation became a thing. And so he had had, like, kind of rotating guests, which, you know, you had adopted in your whole Metroid Prime thing. Mm-hmm. And so that was how I had uh, my first my first gig. I'm just gonna raise my finger there, though. I mean, I, okay. we did have rotating guests, in, or we're supposed to in Super Metroid, mm-hmm. but a lot of people couldn't get the Skype thing going. 
But yeah, to be, to well, be... it was complicated technology at first. Like there wasn't like streaming wasn't really a thing back then. There That's was, right. Uh, yeah. The whole uh, what was it called? Kylera server. Kylera Netplay. Yeah. Kylera Netplay. Yeah. So you like both people had to run ZS and ES at the same time and have the ROM of the game and like you hosted the server, the other person would just like see you playing live from there. Right, and it would like try to stream the controller inputs, and people could get desynced That's and start right, seeing yeah. different things on their computers. So you would see, back in the day, you would see this thing where when people had to load a state when playing that game or some particularly hard game, it would have to, like, load the state on the other person's end as well, so it would take, like, five seconds to load that, every single state. Well, that was ZSNES that did the state thing. You couldn't do load states with Kylera. That's right, yeah. That's right. That's right. It used to be tough, kids. <laughs> you don't have the technology back in the day. Taking your let's plays for granted now. I know, it's ridiculous. These jerks. It, it's so easy now. So um, so after that, um, like the first thing I'd like, like I'd never gotten into playing a game myself. I'd just kind of like been in the background talking with other people who were playing games, much like I still do. Right, right, right. And then that's when, uh, if anyone remembers Zomadoc, he started this let's play of a ROM hack of Legend of Zelda called Parallel Worlds. I don't remember that. Yeah, so it was these two guys named uh, Euclid cares. and Seth, who, uh, this was the, like, the first ROM hack, or not, maybe not the first ROM hack, but kind of one of the it, first, like, it depends complete, on, complete overhaul ROM hacks. It depends on how you define ROM hack, because some people, like, ROM hack, like, Japanese video games, just put them into English, but then, like, mm -hmm. there's the whole ROM hack thing where they would take, like, already made American games and just make them hard, or... But, you know, like, games we saw make them harder and things like that. And that was, like, Parallel yeah. World-style ROM hack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where it was Parallel just... Worlds, which led to your Kaizos and et cetera, et cetera. Right. But I think Parallel Worlds was the first thing on SA that was like that, so it was kind of a novel concept that people got into. And I don't really remember how I got into that with Zomadoc in the first place, or how we kind of got into our buddy-buddy thing. But, um, you know, I hung around for most of that thread that happened. Then after that, I was like, you know, I think I could contribute something to this, and then... That's and you were why. totally wrong. I was totally wrong. I had no idea what I was doing. And uh, so I'd played a, a Battletoads game, not the not the Battletoads game, quote-unquote, but one I had played as a child growing up very, uh, very thoroughly, the Super Nintendo Battletoads, and that was the first one I did by myself. Then that was what the whole, hey, I'll let's play a hard game, but do it in a skilled way... And so that appealed to some people for whatever reason, and so that's how I kind of got into doing my own thing a little bit. I remember you were doing Lurk... Didn't you, like, let's play with Lurk Dog, too, back in the day? <laughs> Lurk Dog, um... God, I miss that guy. Me too. I don't... How would you, like, describe his style? I don't know. He would just get, <laughs> he would just get really high and play video games. Yeah, like, there was... An, <laughs> like, you know, Let's Play had had this whole kind of quality standard thing behind it, but Lurk Dog was able to throw that out the window and still be awesome. No, yeah, he totally eschewed that, but he was funny enough to make it work. Exactly, exactly. Well, that's, that's the thing that about SA, and in general, when it comes to Let's Play, it's like, you, you can, like, throw out the rules if you're, like, funny enough. It's just mm -hmm. that the problem is, like, you know... Like, no Taxidermist Paste had done that. Yeah, Exactly. Him and Molly Pop Mambo were very funny, and, like, the whole yeah. bubble bobble thing is a terrible idea for a Let's Play, but they were just funny enough, and it just worked well enough that it worked. Mm -hmm. I miss Blue Lander, too. She was really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. She's in that, what, uh, Lyle and Cube Sector game. I remember watching that. Mm hmm So, yeah, video Let's Play kind of kind of blew up all over the place with people finding their own different, unique takes on games, kind of mm -hmm. injecting their personality into, you know, people's personalities are different, so it kind of makes Let's Play appealing in different ways. And so that's kind of where it started taking off more, and once people kind of figured out how to do it, uh, you know, it allowed for that kind of uh, creativity. Well, that's the whole problem, too, though, is once it got mainstream, just everybody just started doing it, doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, it's a double-edged sword, to be sure. So, you know, some people can do it in a good way, but then... Then these whole spin-off Let's Play forums happened at some point. I really want to know of the two, right? I mean, there was Let's Play Forum dot com, and there was like one other, like really, really obscure one. It was the Let's Play Forum dot com that kind of inspired Red Supreme, wasn't it? It was. It was. Yeah. But I think that's another story for another time. For another podcast, perhaps. We're closing in on an hour right now. I think so. And we've left people in suspense already, so... <laughs> I agree. I think we maybe... Want to, we want you to listen to episode 